Thanks to the support as a channel member, Owen Herterich. A Bundesliga game against Bayern Munich and the quarterfinal of the Europa League. Things are hotting up in our pursuit to win all of the things. Hello, welcome to Club 6, part 8 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have that Bundesliga game against Bayern Munich, who are down into third place at the moment, but did beat us comfortably earlier in the season. Then we've got the first leg of the Europa League quarterfinal against Galatasaray. Since you were last with me, we've only played a couple of games. Uh, one game, in fact, off the back of the Leon match. We beat Hertha Berlin 2-1, which leaves the Bundesliga table looking like this. 28 games played. I remember it's only a 34-game season here in Germany, so only six games to go. We're four points clear of Leipzig, five clear of Bayern Munich. But as mentioned, Bayern Munich did beat us earlier in the season. Are they the only team to beat us? No, we lost to Augsburg as well. Of course we did. Uh, but they were the last team to beat us, 3-2. Uh, it doesn't tell the whole story. It was 3-0 until the 86th minute when we put on a little bit of a late fight back, but it wasn't enough. If we can beat Bayern Munich here, we ha have all but got the title wrapped up. We do play Leipzig on the penultimate game of the season, but I'd like to think it'll all be done uh, a little bit sooner than that if we can find a way past Bayern Munich. But they are, I mean, they were much better than us when we played them before, but that was an us that didn't yet have Colin Schultz. So maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to find a way past them this time at their place. And this is the team we're going to put out there to try and get that job done. We are missing Lewis Stewart, which is a big thing. He is our best defender by a country mile. He's out for the next five to 11 days. So we'll miss the first thing against Galatasaray as well. Hopefully that doesn't end up being hugely problematic for us. But we're going with Diego Henrique in goal. Back four of Locatelli, Diego Norberto, Posterino and John. Drury and Idoloff in midfield. And then Ballo, Schultz and Boning behind Luis Gustavo up front. This is going to be a big test for that no umph midfield that we were talking about in the last episode. Uh, we are very, very good going forward, but we have absolutely no defensive cover from our central midfield with Drury, who started the season as our attacking midfielder and creative force, playing as the most offensively minded midfielder, the fullback still being asked to push on. There are going to be times when Erling Haaland is being covered by only two defenders. It'll be fine. He ruined us in the fixture earlier on in the season, but fingers crossed. he's Hopefully he's aged more now and won't be as much of a threat. Oh, my word. Oh, Henrique, that's why he's the third best goalkeeper in the world. He looked like he'd lost it, but comes back to make an excellent save to keep it at nil nil we'll take a nil nil here a draw today because we've got that little bit of a cushion we will absolutely take a draw today because then we've just got to find a way past leipzig when we play them that that's fine a draw today music to my ears nil nil at half time it is Bayern on the attack again we still haven't shown any real sign of anything resembling an attack so far i do wonder if maybe we should would it be insane to go to the attacking instruction we're not playing with any kind of defensive system, we might as well just not bother about defending at all. Just throw everybody forward and try and grab goals. It's what we're good at. Look at our goal difference. A goal difference of 63 dwarfs everything else in the league. It's like double the next highest goal difference. So we certainly know how to score more than the opposition. Boning's in here. And Boning, very fortuitous bobble of the ball, allows him to tuck it past the keeper and we are 1-0 up. The Bundesliga could be coming back to Dortmund for the first time in, what, 20 years? Um, Schultz got hold of the ball, played it to Luis Gustavo, who, I mean, it's such a for it's a fortunate bounce and then terrible play from the Bayern defender. I mean, he's messed up twice there, uh, but Boning is there to capitalise. We're 1-0 up and now Schultz plays it to Ballo. Ballo charging forward and his shot goes over. Can we have the full-time whistle now, please, referee? As it stands, we're eight points clear of Bayern with five games to go. They ain't winning the league if it ends like this. And we still maintain that four-point gap over Leipzig, which of course would mean we could afford to lose against them and still win the league. Not that that's what we'd be planning on doing, but it's nice to have that little bit of a cushion knowing we'd have to drop points somewhere else as well. 
or our game against them could end up not mattering. Of course, we've still got 20 minutes or so of this match to get through first. So let's not count our chickens before they're hatched. Um, oh, Easter weekend chicken reference. Good work, Kev. That wasn't even deliberate. Um, right, they... Uh, Oh, goodness me. Harlan sprays it out wide, out wide on this right-hand side. Cross comes in. I mean, it felt inevitable as soon as the cross... As soon as the crossing position was there, our fullbacks pushing on as ever. And uh, we've just been beaten at that far post. Harlan not even really having to get involved aside from the original pass. But from that moment, once it became clear he was getting the cross in, I just didn't feel confident at all. And their guy is completely unmarked at the far post. I don't even know where John is. John should be around there. So, John, John, where are you? <sighs> right. 1 1 is still fine. We said we'd take 0 0. We take 1 1 as well. We take a draw. A draw is always going to be fine away from home against Bayern Munich for as long as we're here in Germany. That is always going to be fine. Right. Our usual two substitutions initially getting Ruben and uh, getting Ruben on and pushing Drury forward. And now we've just got to look at where else we need more energy. Drury could do with coming off, really, but we don't have another attacking midfielder to throw. I mean, we've got Dornbush. I really don't think this is a time for him, really. We could bring young Philip Hesse on in midfield. But Idolov, that's probably the sensible thing to do. Swap those two around. And, uh, I mean, it's a very young and inexperienced central midfield partnership now. But potentially a little bit more defensively capable, which, I mean, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not really sure. And Enrique makes the save again. He's had a very good game today. Not that the average rating, or he's, it's not an average because it's just the one rating. It's not an average, is it? But his rating would tell you he hasn't had a particularly good game. This is why I never trust the in-game ratings. I've seen Diego Enrique play well today and make, some, make several very important saves. Right, Ballo on the left-hand side. Can't get past his man. It remains 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I'm very much of the thought that I don't really care what's ha what the players are doing when the, uh, when the highlights aren't happening. You win and lose matches based on what happens in the four or five highlights you get. If the players are playing well in the highlights, I don't care what their rating is. I just want to see them play well in the key moments of the match because that's where it's won and lost. See? That's Kev level of thinking right there why we don't look at ratings. Drury has won a penalty, surely. I mean, it's absolutely a dive. I hope the uh, the referee doesn't get anyone to have a look at this too closely because it looked like the most deliberate dive, contrived penalty I've ever seen. But I think we've got it. Have we got it? We've got it. I mean, we'll, we're taking it. Obviously, we'll take it. And now we've got, through Luis Gustavo, the chance to go 2-1 up. And we do. And Drury... What a contribution to our title push with one of history's great dives. That was right up there with Richarlison in the network game. The difference, of course, is Richarlison does it consistently in the network game, which you should be watching the network game live on Twitch every Thursday. Highlights every Sunday morning here on YouTube. It's the most fun thing that I do, for sure. The videos are delightful. And there's not much to catch up on. There's only like 20 episodes you could catch up in a, in a day over a bank holiday weekend. Hint, hint. Um, right. We have won 2-1. That is massive. How did Leipzig do? If Leipzig dropped points here at the same time, that, that then becomes even more massive. Um, Leipzig. Do, 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 where are they? Why can't I see them? Oh, there, there they are. Leipzig 1-3-1. One, one. So it's still a four-point gap over them, but Bayern are done. They're, they're not winning the league. Second year in a row, they've not won the league. And not only that, they're not even going to finish in the top two this season. The Bayern Munich period of dominance is absolutely over. Uh, there's there's two new teams in town. It's me and Benny McCarthy. Who thought Benny McCarthy would end up being my big rival to end the series? We've already played against him in a Champions League final last year. Now we're competing to win the Bundesliga with him. It's me versus Benny. But first, Galatasaray in the quarterfinal of the Europa League. So no changes for the Galatasaray game because squad rotation is for cowards, as we know. And uh, let's just go beat Galatasaray as well. Uh, we are at home in the first leg, so we're looking for a big result here to make things a little bit, a little bit more stress. I wouldn't say stress-free, a little less stressful. 
going into a second leg as we look to set up a semi-final in, like I said yesterday, a Europa League that looks very, very winnable after uh, seemingly very few of the big Champions League sides making it through to this stage, which is a bit of a weird one, really. I guess there weren't that many really top sides that were shock exits from the Champions League this year, which works out very nicely for us. It's a nice little warm-up ready for our return to the Champions League next year, which is all but rubber-stamped at this point. Um, obviously, if we win the Bundesliga, if we finish top four in the Bundesliga, we're back in the Champions League. We're almost certainly going to do that. I don't think it's completely mathematically correct yet, but it will be. We're back in the Champions League. And fingers crossed, we've just gone one up here. In the Europa League, we have 1-0 to Dortmund, less than 10 minutes in. Can you believe there was a point this season where I was considering... Um, replacing Ballo and playing Schultz out on the left-hand side. It's now his 16th goal of the season for Ballo. I distinctly remember him having a pretty quiet start to the season and he has blossomed into an absolute superstar as the season has gone on. Um, the entire front three of owning Gustavo, Ballo and even Ruben as the backup that comes in and, and makes an appearance in almost every game. All of them well into double figures for goals. We are not shy of a few goals in this team, especially when you've got Drury and Schultz pulling all the strings, setting everything up for us. But Ballo is looking to get another move going here. He ends up slide tackling while still in possession of the ball, which is a bit of a weird one. And now Idloff back to Norberto and Schultz has dropped deep. Idloff playing Boning in behind. Boning slots it through to Gustavo. I suspect there'll be a suggestion of offside there. I'm not sure if Gustavo has perfectly timed his run. The referee had his finger in his ear so we'll see what the outcome of that is. I'd quite like a goal, please. Yeah, that, I mean, that one did look offside. I'll, uh, I'll accept your decision there, referee, reluctantly. I mean, it is only just. Sometimes these decisions that look like they're absolutely nailed on aren't quite as clear as they look on first inspection. And there was an example of one there. Because that in, 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 the, in the olden days, back when I was a boy, before cameras existed, apparently... That probably would have been given as a goal. Right, John, building up an attack from the back, off the off the back of this free kick. Schultz has now um, got himself in a position to cut the ball back to idle off, and it's blocked by the Galatasaray defender. It feels like a second goal is coming, and I, I do feel like we probably need one before half-time to properly capitalise on the dominance we've had in this first half. You know how these ties can go. There will be a spell at some point during these two matches where Galatasaray are outplaying us. And we need to make sure that when that happens, we've got enough of a cushion to not worry about it. Lovely little through ball from Schultz there. Ball across to Gustavo and he's hit the post. Oh my goodness. What do we have to do to grab this second goal? We've been all over them for the entire match so far. They're very lucky to only be 1-0 down still. And now Schultz with the free kick plays it to Drury. Weirdly goes all the way back to Norberto. I assume our two little creative geniuses have got a plan for something here. Um, idle off to Gustavo, who's come deep. Schultz now boning. Uh, John looking to slot boning back in again, but he didn't have the pace to get past the defender. And no, the two little creative geniuses didn't have a plan, apparently. Um, but the ball is cleared and just returned straight back to our players again. And boning on the right-hand side, attacking once again. He seems to be having a lot of fun, just losing his markers constantly. And uh, he's now grabbed himself a superb goal into that top corner. He has looked like a huge threat in the entire match so far. He's, this is why Manchester City want him. This is why Paris Saint-Germain want him. He is one of the best in the world at being an inside forward off this right-hand side. And he's got that in his locker as well. Now two inside forwards. Bearing in mind, we've played most of the last 10 seasons with a diamond. I love the fact that our two biggest attacking threats in what is our final club of the career, are inside forwards, a position we haven't really used on FM22 very much. And it seems like it's working really rather nicely with two inside forwards cutting in. Uh, Schultz now to Boning, back to Schultz again, and now Drury spraying it forward to Ballo, who's got forward on the left again. Idolov to Ballo, and he's, his shot is spilled by the goalkeeper. There's no one there to tuck it in. Uh, but we, sh I mean, we should be more than two goals ahead. We are, as I've just said in the halftime team talk, we're already putting on a little bit of a show. Um, we should be grabbing lots more goals in this second half to to really make it. We kind of want to be at the point where we're we're as good as in the semi final. 
before we have to worry about the next match so that we can fully focus in on winning the Bundesliga, then come back to the Europa League for the semi-final and final and worry about this when it's the only thing that we've got to concern ourselves with. Norberto plays it all the way back to Henrique and now Posterino's got it and we'll look to uh, bring the ball forward, playing with two ball-playing defenders. Neither of them afraid to do what we've just seen there from Norberto. Locatelli's in behind now. This is all defenders in this move. Idolov is there and Idolov should have scored. He's one of, I think, seven current German internationals in this team. We have a very homegrown look about this Dortmund side. Idle off one of them, and he missed there, but he's in again. Idle off this time, takes it a little bit wider. I mean, he tried to do it the fancy way. He should just be drilling that into the bottom corner. He's got all the time into it, probably too much time. He had so long, he had the opportunity to take the ball wide and try and dink it over the keeper. If anything, it would have been better if there was a defender breathing, his, breathing down his neck. So he just had to smash it into the bottom corner and then he probably would have scored. Posterino now bringing the ball out of defence. I mean, we're getting a nice little showcase today of how comfortable the ball our two defenders are. But these highlights are weird. There we go. This one feels like a goal. Gustavo is in. Gustavo scores. It's a lovely ball forward from Idolov. That's Idolov at his best. Rather than getting in behind the defenders, playing someone else in, Gustavo much more clinical, as you'd expect from the centre-forward. Uh, but this is just a, a nice goal. Take our time, look for the opportunity. Then when we find it, strike quickly. 3-0 now, and we are still attacking. We're relentless. Locatelli on the left. Crosses, looking for boning, and it's hit the crossbar again. I think that's twice now we've hit the crossbar today. We are, I mean, we, this should be a cricket score. We're absolutely all over him. And I think John has picked up a knock. So that seems like an opportunity to get Thomas Muller, not that one, um, a little bit of European game time. So let's make that change immediately. Muller can come on and get himself a good 35, 40 minutes of Europa League quarterfinal action to help in his development. He finished sixth on the, I think it was sixth on the next gen list. Owning's just scored another header. Um, sixth on the next gen list that was just published. In fact, talking of the next gen list, that was the other piece of breaking news. And um, we have arranged to sign the next gen winner. I'll show you both of these after the game. Um, the next gen winner is coming in, and also Schalke had a player in the top ten for the next gen. So, you know, we took we took him off them. Because that's what we're here for. We're here to show Schalke how different things... It could have been them poaching Thomas Muller, not that one. It could have been a total reverse of the situation if they'd have just shown a little bit of patience. But they didn't. So, oh, you've developed another good youngster. Oh, well. Yoink. That's ours. We're not going to pay £157 million like we had to for Schultz. We'll just take him off you while he's 17. They'll learn. I think they probably already have learned at this point. Boning has a hat-trick now as the goals really start to tumble in. Once And yet another 10 out of 10 performance from Boning. I think he does it just because it leads to such great headlines in the inbox. Um, right, we're going to bring Ruben on. Boning can come off now. He's uh, He's done his bit. And for the final change, who would we like to bring on? I'd like to give Hesse a bit more game time. So we're going to bring him on. Idle off in the centre of midfield and just carry on rattling up the goals, please. Let's have a couple more. Let's really send a message. Luis Gustavo and his shot is straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. Galatasaray have only had one shot on target in this entire match. And I, I mean, we're just, we're, very, we're really very good. Look at them. Look at all these red ratings. As I've mentioned before, I really put a lot of weight behind the player ratings that the game gives. And I think it really is demonstrating just how good we've been compared to Galatasaray, that we had a 10 out of 10 player and they've had a number of players below a six. It's all about the ratings. It's all I really care about. Right, let's uh, let's just show you these two youngsters that we've poached. They haven't actually arrived with us yet. They'll come in at the end of the season. Um, but yeah, we poached them straight out of the next gen list because we've still got loads of money knocking around. So we might as well. So the la oh, but Etienne Tipple's joining in the summer because... He was free, and he's Etienne Tipple, and he's my buddy, isn't he? Uh, this is the guy that we've stolen off of Schalke. Francis Atta is already a, a full Ghanaian international at 17 years old, centre midfielder, 
attacking midfielder. Um, he's played 23 games for Schalke this season um, in a season where Schalke might be getting relegated, um, although they have recovered a little bit, but there's only one point clear of that relegation playoff and we're already taking their best player off of them. It serves you right. So he's joining up with us. And then the lad who won the next gen, I think was him. Does that, does that, no, he's leaving us. Hold on. Players coming in. It must have been this guy. Geraldo Ariano, 18-year-old, already Mexican, full international, left winger, who can also play um, anywhere across that attacking front three. Um, we didn't even scout him, so I don't know how his scouting is. We literally just bought him off the back of him winning the next gen and um, and having a release clause. So I don't... We could probably scout... Oh, we are trying to scout him now. Um, we're getting a few attributes come through, but what we don't have... I guess there you go. We do have a scout report now. He's only 63% scouted, um, but five-star potential. Already, uh, already potentially three-star current ability as well. Um, we're loaning him straight back to America for uh, another season once he arrives. So there's a chance if we win it all next year, if we go and win the Champions League next season, you might never see him play for us. I suspect it won't happen that quickly. I think we've probably got a couple more seasons here in the series before we've won everything. But Atta will be in joining us this summer. Schalke has to loan him back. And I just laughed at them. Loan him back. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.